Hi. 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 How are you guys? Doing great. Yeah, how are you doing? I was like, I was going to sit in your seat, Dave. Go for it. Uh, producer Andrew yeah. and we have director, the director. Dave Green, and then Henry Graham is our writer. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. So, who would like to begin? You guys can just... Who, did everyone see the movie? Yeah. Yeah. Almost yeah. everyone? Yeah. Almost everyone. Yeah. Oh. Oh, great. Cool. If you're here, that means you like the movie, or not necessarily? <laughs> <laughs> If you didn't like the movie, you're welcome. To, you don't have to stay. I don't. Okay, no. How could you not like that? Um, I like the movie. We, we love the movie. Our kids love the movie, awesome. and it was such congratulations. And how the cast was really adorable and had such good chemistry. So how was the casting process, and how was it working with these young, somewhat inexperienced actors? What was that process like? Uh, well, I, I will talk about the beginning, and then I'll let the director talk to you about his experiences per hour. I, the casting process was tough. I mean, we, we, we found all these actors, every one of them, about four or five days before we started shooting, I think. Five days? Oh, wow. Oh, we, yeah. We, we, uh, we weren't panicked at all. We're like, we're shooting in five days and have no cast. Um, I remember... Uh, we were looking for authenticity, so I don't know if you guys thought their performances were very authentic, but you, you, know, you hand it to these two guys over here to create great dialogue and great directing. But we also believe that we casted these kids um, because they felt real. You know, The whole point of the movie is to speak to the next generation of, of kids, right? And um, their parent, you know, and for parents like y you guys and uh, for our age, uh, to harken back to some of the movies that we used to see when we were growing up, kind of thing. Um, a lot of you moms are a lot younger than I am, so maybe you don't remember E.T. Uh, and Goonies. Uh, no, but uh, it, but I think uh, what we wanted to do was create a, a, a more uh, as much uh, authentic feel as possible because of the style of the movie um, and how would Goonies be be done today. So that so we had a hard time finding the kids because um, we really were looking for. Um, kids not to be acting, actually. And I thought, this, we thought these were our best choices and, and most importantly, the right chemistry. But I'll leave the acting performance to Dave. Yeah, I, I, you know, when we, when we got them all together in the room for the first time, um, I just told each of them, because there's a lot of pressure when you're auditioning and there's a camera and there's strangers and it's, it's just a little weird. So um, when we, when I, first got the group of the four of them, I said, uh, you've each been chosen because you're all awesome and you're all very special and you're all wildly talented. And I want you all to feel super comfortable on the set. And I want, you know, if, if I give you a direction that doesn't make sense, or if there's, um, you know, if I tell you to stand somewhere, it doesn't make sense. Or if, even if I'm putting the camera somewhere weird because, you know, Tuck is filming the movie, and, and if Astro thought I was putting the camera somewhere weird, um, I said, you should have the freedom to just tell me, you know, I wouldn't, I'm, I'm the storyteller and I'm not telling the story that way. Um, so we really wanted to create an environment where the kids felt completely, um, honestly, comfortable and, and free to tell us. I wouldn't say it that way. I would did say it this way. Did they ever do that? And they did, yeah. They did. Make you feel old? Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I would actually sometimes listen. You know, you have like you can like hear the microphones on the kids in between takes. Aww. They would start talking to each other like they talk to each other, and I would like this, and I would just be like, okay, I don't, like, <laughs> I don't know that word. Like, you know, like down. either just, that or I just kept saying, just roll, 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 roll. Yeah. Don't worry, just yeah. capture this stuff. Yeah. Where was the camera? I mean, how did you? Was it actually on your head as though you were him, or what? The camera was actually like a. It was a big camera it was the kind of you know it's a red camera it's what they shoot uh, all the 3d movies on so yeah. it was um it was actually uh an old person behind the camera for the whole time so uh, it's actually there it's, it's just like any big movie there there is no difference it's all manipulation yeah that's interesting you couldn't tell that at all yeah okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah it was uh that that's the whole point right that's the whole fun of it i mean you know we i think you did do some stuff on phones though Yes, there's a couple. We did, we did, yeah. Two scenes shot on the iPhone. On the iPhone, yeah. yeah. So that, that was like really running, fun. I felt like one of the parts. Yeah, the first scene with Tuck 
where he's doing the confessional at home, and then um, the scene where Munch is in the truck. Yeah, he's, he's, right. he's tearing up. He's tearing up. What, what did you guys think about the emotion of, of the movie? Did you guys like the fact that we went there? Because I think, because I think that yeah, it's compelling. I think that kids today, I think one of the mistakes is like I wouldn't call this movie a kids movie. I think it's unfair. You know, I think the movie's a family movie, and I think families have. Um, every family has moments where the door gets shut and your daughter or son is crying and that's just the bottom line. I mean, if that's not going on in your family, I want to live with you. <laughs> but I think that they all understand that, that uh, they understand pain. You know, I showed my nieces and nephew uh, one of our trailers that Dave, Dave cut and I said, well, what do you think? And I go, here comes the, oh, I love the truck coming apart. Here it goes. You know, every one of them is going to tell me the same thing. Not one of the only, every one of them said, you know, Munch crying in the back of the truck. And I said, why? He said, well, because I feel like that sometimes, Uncle. I feel that way. And I thought that was really, caught me really off guard because I was, we were nervous to put some in, some of that in the trailers just because it has a lot of emotion and it makes you feel, you know, uh, you really underestimate kids and the power of like, that they understand that they understand feelings and they understand how a song makes you feel and they're so much so advanced emotionally we just didn't want to play games with them but like let's just give it to them like the way they think and feel and see if they respond and let's just play it straight and let's play it real and and let's live by our convictions we said we weren't going to talk down to them let's just own it all the way through the movie and i think it paid off i think parents appreciate it too so you guys don't have to sit in the movie that just feels so phony and Everyone's so, everyone's like running around, like, oh, my son's so great. It's not, you know, everything's perfect. I don't think that's what life is. I think the idea is that we all, we go through things and you have to tell your kids to overcome obstacles. I don't think movies are about, movies are about overcoming something. Otherwise, what are we going, I mean, to go and watch a movie that means, that has nothing to offer, feels like a really rough hangout for parents, you know, and for kids because they don't think you're being real. So... There was actually a moment. I think everybody. Oh, you know, go ahead. No, go ahead. I no, think it's... everybody in the room has a point where a childhood friend moves away when we're children. It's mm -hmm. heartbreaking. When you um, wrote the original screenplay, did you decide that the end they still would move apart, did, or you, did you think, oh, we're going to have Mall stay now that there's no ship and and make it all happy? Henry, <laughs> why, why don't you answer that, Henry? Yeah, we we always wanted them to move apart because. A lot, and that's connected to what the authenticity that Andrew's talking about is, is it is a heartwarming movie, and these kids do get Echo home, but at the end of the day, we can't have them be superheroes. And at the end of the day, there's a reality that they all live in. And so how can they overcome that based on what they've learned over that night? Um, so that, that's something we always wanted. We had to fight for it a little bit sometimes, but at the end of the day, we're really... But the about. irony is, like, you know, we say that when we mean not be superheroes, we, may, we mean, like, flying in the air. Yeah. But as far as human superheroes, emotional superheroes, absolutely, 100%, that's what the movie is about. The movie's about... It does take superhuman strength to say goodbye or, or uh, overcome, like, a night like that or know that if you're small, you can overcome something so big. And what I mean by small is like, I think we all feel small at times and they feel they're very young. And I think kids sometimes don't feel empowered. And I think what we're saying is you can be a superhero. Right. You just can't fly, but you can accomplish giant things in your life. It doesn't matter how old you are and you should aspire for big dreams. And that's what these kids do. Um, but what we wanted to do was not, like Henry was saying, like we didn't want some weird moment where they take off their shoes, something goes on, and they're flying, and yet they're doing. It. We just we wanted to keep their feet on the ground. Well, yeah, and what you're you know? saying, we we had this moment in the beginning. I don't know if y'all remember it, where Tuck says in the opening, he says, um, "What can you do? You're just a kid. Like I'm just a kid." And that's how we open the movie, and then we end the movie with him looking at camera and being like, "We just did that." Uh, yeah. And like that's how we wanted to build to that moment where these right. kids feel that they can do anything. And at the beginning, they don't think they can. Yeah, because I, I think you're right. Because I think kids feel, you know, they don't drive. They can't drive. They can't, you know. Uh, 
Google. And they did in our movie. Like, you, yeah. you, bet, you bet they did. You bet yeah, they did. I was like, no. You know, you bet they did. <laughs> no, so how were you able, you know, because I know you guys had a lot of special effects yeah. and CGI, so how were you able to draw that emotion from them? Because there were some, you know, very emotional scenes. Absolutely. Um, well, a lot of the Echo stuff was off camera. Um, because Echo was either not there because he was all robotic or he was CG. So um, the, the kids really, I would say they bounced off each other, you know, um, and they were really there for each other when they were preparing scenes, and I was too, but um, it, was, it was interesting to see them work as a group because they really, um, you know, they, they each had different styles just as actors. So. Um, uh, you know, Astro was always off in the corner, just going over his lines <coughs> over and over and over. And uh, Reese was with his dad, like talking about, you know, a joke or like, how can I do this physical comedy beat? And um, but then to see them to see them together in those emotional moments was was really was really cool. They all kind of lifted each other and rose to the occasion. Tail really went like somewhere personal. Yeah, at the end, absolutely. When he's talking, because there wasn't. There wasn't a spaceship going into the air, and there wasn't an, an alien, but he really... Yeah, he's thinking yeah. about his own dog that died or some, some yeah, sort of he, thing he, that happened Yeah, he, in he went there. It was yeah. pretty, uh, yeah. it was a pretty rough yeah. afternoon, I think, if I remember. I felt bad. It was, yeah, I, mean, it, I think for when they were emoting or talking about Echo, or yeah. especially with Alex, you know, and say, well, you had, I knew he had a cat, and then say, you know, think about what would happen if they took Minky away and they, you know, oh, <laughs> if yeah. they did that and he was like, all right, let's go, let's go. So, so Dave is mean, basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I just want to address something that we did that came up earlier just before before I forget. So I just want to let you guys know, as, as parents, one of the things that we try to accomplish in the movie with, let's say, the driving or anything else that we do, it's like, what we're trying to say is like, we're not advocating, uh, you know, getting into stuff, but what we, what we were saying is like, they were... They were sticking together, and they're gonna save their friend. And they were gonna do what they had to do to get there. And I think I would tell my kids the same thing. I'm like, look, you gotta do what you gotta do to save this little guy. You have to have conviction in your life, you know. And I think that's so. Everything that we do comes from a positive, um, positive place. I think the whole movie has that experience. I don't, and I think it's like people get it. I mean, they get it. Kids get it. Parents get it. Uh, I think that the truth of the, but the the reality is like the whole movie. Is generated from a very positive um, place, scene for scene. If you really go back and look, everything is being done for all the right reasons. You know. How do you find the the perfect name, the Echo? Because I love the little guy. How do you find that Echo is the perfect name for the movie? Oh, for the name. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, that's contested, actually, isn't it? <laughs> um, I my memory of it, it's all sort of this hodgepodge of us just creating this movie. Um, but. <laughs> do you, yeah, my memory is honestly that I was behind a car, and it was an echo, oh. and I was like, and I and I heard, and I I saw that, and I was like, oh god, because I, I we never wanted to speak English, you know, we never wanted to be like, I wanted a language, and then suddenly it becomes a different kind of movie. So how do you learn to communicate with something? And so I thought, well, what if he echoes what you say, you know, and it's sort of the tone of it, and then then we got the beeps, and that language was sort of built from that. So that's how echo came to me. Is there a name for the language? For his language? Yeah. That's a great question. That Robotic beeps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is we just can't speak it. Okay. <laughs> and how did you um, get the cell phones in it? Like, what was that idea? Because I do think my cell phone contacts my um, alarm clock sometimes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, seriously. Like, how did you decide that that's how they would, he would transmit um, the You mean the, the maps that came through? Maps. That was yeah. brilliant. Um, well, we had um, we have sort of sort of this idea, the history of that ship, and the ship sent out um, a signal, which brought Echo to start it, and um, and the idea was that that transmission, when Echo is shot down, is sending back to the ship to ask to say that I've been stranded here, and they're standing over the ship, and it interrupts their phones. So that's really just cool. Logic. It's just it's really cool. cool. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> I know that's dorky Who explanation. Cares? Who cares? Who cares? Why we do it? Just it's cool. The shape of the echo. Yeah. Like, did you guys have a bunch of different prototypes before you picked? Yeah, we had a lot of. Yeah, we took the stuffed animals from my bed, bedroom. That I, <laughs> yeah. Is that weird? Yeah, not at all. No. Um, we we had a lot of artists draw stuff that were some of them were 
we got to look at a hundred different things, and some of them looked like little squiggly worms, and some of them were a little too gross. And the design that came in that we kind of fell in love with right away was this design that were, he looked he looked like a very noble owl, you know, and uh, and it was a little reference that Henry found online. He was like, well, what if he looks like because the part of the thing was we had to have him be small enough so he could go into their backpack and come out, but. He showed me a picture of this little baby owl on Google. <laughs> little baby owl. Yeah. And you'll never, you'll always have that page. And also, what I loved about what we, what we were oh, creating sorry. was like was that that he would be small but powerful, yeah. right? Just like the kids. Yeah. So, and you know, I think that this microphone sucks. That's why I think. Uh, I just think that uh, that that we we wanted to create a character that seemed vulnerable, but in the end was really powerful. So what's the step? You find what you want it to look like, and then you're just like, make it happen. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, the illustrator would draw it up. And when we, um, one of the first things we did is we went to this creature house called Legacy Effects, and they are, um, they build like Iron Man, the suit for Iron Man, and they build um, dinosaurs for the new Jurassic Park. And they're the former Stan Winston Studios, and they're like, the best manufacturer in the world, especially for um, animatronics that are really small like this. And we took them the, the design of Echo and we said, um, this is him and he's this big. And then they were like, well, can he be this big? No, he's really small. And they said, well, we've never actually made something that's with that many robotics that's that small. Like, this is going to take us you know, a few months to, to crack. And we're like, you have a week. Yeah. You have a week. <laughs> so we, we had to start shooting before we actually saw the manufactured uh -huh. little guy. And then, um, and so there are certain shots in the movie where you'll see the, the actual puppet that uh, that company built. And then there are other shots in the movie where Echo's more expressive, where he's CG. And um, and so there's a, a company that that worked on those shots. Well, I, I think what I love about what these guys did was uh, with Echo was that they that we didn't make the movie about if the movie could be good without Echo, then we made a good movie. Yeah, and so I, I think we did that. I think the movie's well, about the kids. When you when you brought us yeah. into our to the room when we first met you, that was sort of the that was something you really set out and was a really a, a godsend because we were just we just created characters and we wanted to do something as true to Stand by Me. As some of these other movies that had supernatural elements and yeah it was just about those kids and then when echo became adorable we started bringing him into the story more and more and then when he started testing really high we realized we got to put him more and more <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah we got all we have plushy out there we have a lot of plushy toys a lot of toys you guys can get yeah we hope you want a, a real, a real deal? Some kids were asking me on tour. They were like, "Is he real? Is he real?" Oh, I just couldn't deal. I was, I was like, "He asked." They're like, "Yes, real." Of course, I did. Why? Like any good adult. Yeah, my five-year-old asked the characters, "Were you able to take Echo home? Is it part of your oh. family?" Oh. oh, Dave reminds me of Echo a little bit. I don't know. He's very shy. <laughs> During production, did you have any awe-inspiring moments that uh, just, you know, you all jumped up like the Toyota commercials and high-fived one another? Hmm. Maybe when I showed up in leather pants, which I wear quite a bit. Is that maybe? I don't know. I remember that day. No? I mean, I had a moment which I just loved. I mean, you were, you were in the middle of, he was in the middle of shooting a movie at a, on a crazy schedule, but I remember seeing that shot with the three kids and the 20 questions in the barn. Yeah. And I saw that shot, and I was yeah. like, this. Rad. Like, I grew up in a VHS era, and I was like, that would be on the back of the VHS. Like, yeah. That's what it is. You know? like, I just loved that shot, and that, that, that's something I thought about. But. There, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good point. We were under the you pressure were, of making yeah. the movie, but there were little, I mean, there's fun stuff on set, like the, um, when the cylinder scares Alex for the first time, like, I went to the puppet guys, and I said, okay, like, does it, it shoots smoke out and stuff. Like I really, I'm not gonna tell Teo yeah. that this is gonna happen. And is yeah, it loud? And they're like, oh yeah, it's loud. Yeah. And I was like, cool. I gave it to him, and like, his, uh, like <laughs> <laughs> right that's all real. And, you know, is there any scenes that there's like little errors that we won't notice? You know that you 
you know, like yeah, about half, half the movie. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know how a point of view movie is done? It's a lot of errors. <laughs> oh, we, I mean, we shot so fast. I, I don't even, I can't even, I can barely remember the shoot. I mean, I was, we were so tired. I can't. We shot it so quickly. Remember, when you have kids, you only have a certain amount of hours a night, and we shot a lot at night. So we're like, you have three hours to get two two days of work. Yeah, two days of work. We were really hustling. I think the movie feels like that. It feels like a real adventure because we were really we were really doing it. We were really doing it, right? It feels real, right? Yeah. How long did it take for you guys to film? Because I know you guys keep mentioning your tight schedules. So how long? Thirty-one days. Thirty-one days. Thirty. But then taking account they only had that so many hours a day with the kids. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I don't even want to break that. Think about it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's should, quite a feat. Yeah, at night with kids, like the sun doesn't go down until nine during the summer, so we had like three hours to shoot. I think 12, on the weekend. Yeah. So we didn't really. But we were getting those big scenes. I mean, he was, you know, really, uh, you know, it, it's a testament to his directing ability. I don't know how in the world we have this movie. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't. I, I. I couldn't. We couldn't do it again. I, I. And I won't ever. That's not true. We have a sequel. I'm doing it again. Except the sequel will be 60, 60 days. Uh, Sixty days of shooting. Uh, all on the spaceship. All. Yeah. yeah. And I will have a. Uh, you know, something very special like a glass case they can wheel me around on. I'll sit beautiful. Like hot to my time telephone machine. and. Yeah. Time well, that's my next movie on December twenty fifth. But that's very far away from a parental guidance film. <laughs> You know, from the producer of Wedding Crasher brings you on <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> Earth to Echo. I actually have to add um, oh, um, okay. Okay. Let, 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 let her let her session. Oh, okay. What inspired you to add um, elements of social media into the movie? Because that, for me, like that just hit home. That's these guys right here. You talked to these guys. Well, I mean, yeah. I think we. It's 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 made by a thirteen year old. You know, he, he shot, directed, edited, technically, let's you know, wrote and all that stuff. And so he we wanted to just how would a thirteen year old interact with his friends? You know, they're not gonna go to a library and take out a map like an Indiana Jones movie. You know, they're gonna they're gonna Google it and find it and send it to each other or I chat and then, so it sort of it all came naturally from that. Yeah, is there one last question before we get yeah, out of here? So um, I love that the movie was like I grew up, so you could just jump on your bike and take off. Yeah. So did you think about that when you, when you were yeah. talking about the old movies that you were taking? Oh, from? yeah. I mean, this movie was inspired by my brother and I. My brother's my brother's was two years younger than I am. Um, he, uh, you know, he's a, a big Microsoft guy. He runs Microsoft Surface, and he's like, uh, and we're both kind of, we, we love each other so much and we used to have a chance to we grew up my my parents are immigrants from from cyprus down in cyprus and i we 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 went to the my dad we're in this little suburbs and we used to ride around on our bikes and get in fights and it was bases loaded bottom of the ninth two outs and then we'd get in a fight and over who won what game and who was pitching and it's a, it's very like when i was 12 and 10 and, and the same thing with the guys here and we sort of bonded over the Goonies and those movies and like where are those movies what what happened yeah what what happened to the and I you know it's unfair to say good old-fashioned because the truth is like that goes up to I am you know I I you know uh, and if you go to Burbank or any suburbs around around here I mean you'll see kids on their bikes and hanging out in the cul-de-sacs and playing baseball and what what happened to those movies which is living in the reality today. The difference is today they just be documenting everything. That's it. You know that that's the difference. The human emotion is the same: heartbreak, first kiss, saying goodbye, getting in fights with your friends, all that stuff. None of that changes. So it's just kind of nice to like bring it back out, as opposed to the big summer blockbusters, which are rad. Don't get me wrong, but those are all you know big, big visual effects films. This is a heartfelt movie. Um, I think that's kind of right. That's our, that, that was what inspired me and, and, and the guys. We all bonded over that. So I, I know we have to go. I, I can see the team over here. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We love that you love the movie.